All right, real fans guide to video. Let's do this. tripods and panning. I get a lot of questions about this and a lot of the Dynamo members actually felt that this was a very common sticking point for beginners. So here we are. Video tripods, what we are focusing on today, are focused on achieving smooth tilts and pans, which comes primarily from the head unit. Tripods can be purchased either as a single unit with a head and legs or separately. You can purchase a head or a set of legs individually without the other unit and then pair them mostly with whatever head or leg unit you want. Leg systems come in two sizes, full size and travel size. Generally speaking, travel size is, as the name suggests, smaller, lighter, and yes, cheaper. Most rail fans prefer this as it's, again, smaller and lighter, so it's easier to move around quickly and set up quickly, take down quickly, and it's a little bit easier on the wallet. However, weight being heavy is very good for a tripod, especially when you're shooting trains. Reason being, a lot of times trains shake the ground. A heavier tripod resists that shake and kind of muffles it, it mutes it, it reduces it. Heavier tripod, smoother, cleaner shot. Another point for heavier tripods, at least if you're like me, the heavier the tripod, generally speaking, the more weight it can handle. You don't want to overload your tripod with a 15 pound camera when the leg system can only hold 15 pounds and then you add it in a five pound head. Now you're five pounds over your limit and you may experience some problems with the legs not being capable of supporting what is on them. For tripod heads, there are a lot of different types. However, for video, the best results will be achieved from a fluid head tripod, like this one from Manfrotto. There are a lot of companies that make tripod heads and a lot that make fluid head tripod heads. I've been trusting Manfrotto tripod heads for about nine years now with excellent results. Of course, there are other companies, Sure, Benro, uh, I believe Small Rig is even making some more budget-friendly tripod heads now, and Manfrotto does have some, however, their slightly more expensive ones are almost always going to be a better result. Of course, not all fluid heads perform the same. You will get ones that are slightly more sticky. This one, had, for instance, has become sticky over the years, and why it's now my backup and is no longer the tripod head that's mounted on my tripod. And again, Going back to the weight of the product, generally the heavier tripod heads are capable of carrying more weight. Taking note of what your tripod head weighs, what your legs weigh, what the legs can handle as far as weight, what the head unit can handle with weight, and how much your camera rig weighs is going to be very important in picking your legs and head unit. A camera that's too heavy, for instance, on a fluid head, could result in jerky pans, tilts, or bad balancing where it becomes difficult to get a smooth pan or tilt. Getting those silky smooth tilts and pans isn't always easy. Yes, gear helps, absolutely. However, that is only half the equation. The other half is, of course, skill and practice. Most fluid head will have this. It's an adjustment knob. There's one for the tilt and one for the pan they can adjust the resistance. More resistance, slower, easier, slow motions. You can, of course, have little resistance and still do a slower motion, but you might need to be a little bit more careful with it. Preparing for a smooth tilt or pan, you're going to be utilizing those knobs, those adjustments. Part of that is going to be practicing on the field, on location, after you've set up your shot, deciding how you're going to pan or tilt or both for the shot. You might need to lock down your tilt or maybe your pan. 
or neither or both. After you decide that, you're practicing your motion, grabbing the tripod and following through the motion as if the train's there, as if your subject is there, even though it's not. You're preparing and practicing for executing the shot and making your adjustments on your knobs and locks as needed. If you can, keeping your feet planted firmly in one spot also helps immensely. Moving your body will often result in little unwanted movements in your arm that then translate into the tripod head. Taking a hand off or putting a hand on to the tripod head or legs mid-shot can result in some very minor jolts and jitters, something you don't want, although can fix in post-production. You'll often want one hand on the grip, one hand on a tripod leg, or the lens or the camera body. But why you want your hand in one of those positions is also very important. So, first thing to understand with this reasoning is the closer your arm, your hand, is to your body, the more stable and fluid your motion will be. So if you're in a tight photo line with lots of people around you and you're trying to pan and you're moving your body as you're moving your body, you could accidentally bump into one of the tripod legs because you are so close to your tripod in the tight photo line. One hand on a tripod leg keeps it in the back of your mind exactly where that leg is so that you don't hit it because you know that your arm is there. You feel it when you're getting close and you won't bump it. You'd often keep a hand on the camera along with the tripod head if you're going to be tilting in the camera motion. The reason for this being it allows you to have that extra point of contact to make a smoother tilting motion with the camera. And the final one, on the lens. The reason you might put your hand on the lens in addition to your tripod head would of course be adjusting your focus or zoom. Now I said in the intro video I don't ever advocate for using the zoom mid shot unless you're going to be cutting it in post. However, if you are, or if you're using the focus ring, then placing your hand on the lens prior to recording is best as, again, adding or removing a hand from the tripod during a shot usually results in a very, very small jitter, but still something you don't want. For about nine years, I used these. I had a pair of them. They are the Manfrotto 502AH. It is a relatively inexpensive fluid head from Manfrotto. From the end of 2013 until the very end of 2022, this was the only tripod head I used. Again, I had two of them. Most Dynamo members actually have these, and I know a number of other large railfan content creators who use this exact head unit. Now, this one is old, it's from 2014, and is beginning to show some signs of its age. I've used it pretty heavily, so I can't say I'm disappointed with that. And as my camera rig is getting heavier, a lot heavier, this one isn't cutting it for me anymore. I've actually upgraded my own rig now to the Manfrotto 608AH, although, quite frankly, I think that this is still one of the best fluid heads on the market, especially for the price. I highly recommend this, or a slightly cheaper option might be the Manfrotto 500AH. The leg system that I'm currently using, which won't really even fit in this tiny studio, so I'll cut to some B-roll of that now. This is the Manfrotto 058B. This is a very, very heavy leg system and is extremely clunky and bulky. But that weight, as I said before, is a very good thing, especially for my heavy camera rig. I wouldn't use anything else, especially when I factor in just how low this tripod goes. It goes so low to the ground that in most situations, I can arrive after the rest of the photo line, set up in front of them, and still be clear of everybody's shots. But what if you had all the right gear, you set your tripod up, you practiced, you adjusted your settings, and it still came out jittery and shaky. You fix it in post. The program that I use is known as DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's the same program that Hollywood uses to edit all the big budget movies. It costs about $300. However, there is a free version of DaVinci Resolve, not Studio, just Resolve, 
offered by Blackmagic Design that has almost all the same features, including the wonderful image stabilization, which Resolve actually has three versions of. I find it's best to test each one with each shot that you're stabilizing and see which one gives you the best results. There's perspective, similarity, and translation, although there have been plenty of times where I thought that perspective would be the best one and then similarity or translation ended up being better. So it is definitely best to test all three and see which one actually produces the desired results. And to cover very briefly, cameras. Generally speaking, the camera doesn't matter that much for getting a smooth shot. Yes, you wanna make sure that your camera is within the weight requirements of your tripod legs and head. However, you can use almost any brand or type of camera. The only thing that you should keep in mind is cameras with image stabilization. Sometimes cameras image stabilization will actually be a bad thing. In almost all cameras with that function, however, you can turn it off. The reason it can be a bad thing is most image stabilization programs, when they do have some form of in-camera motion, there will be a little bit of warping up in the corners and it becomes very distracting. Now certain cameras, like the one I'm shooting with now, have various forms of internal image stabilization and some do produce bad warping and others don't. That's another thing to keep in mind and actually that's going to be a whole nother video, image stabilization and choosing your own camera. Actually, I think that's going to be the next video choosing your camera.